and welcome to this mindfulness um, video on behalf of the Stuart Lowe Trust. My name is Katie, thank you for joining me today. So just a, a quick recap on what mindfulness is. I'm going to read a James Barraz quote today which sums it up quite nicely. Mindfulness is simply being aware of what is happening right now without wishing it were different. Enjoying the pleasant without holding on to it when it changes, which it will. And being with the unpleasant without fearing it will always be this way, which it won't. I hope that kind of sums up mindfulness for you. Um, if you want to go into the kind of basics of mindfulness, I would suggest going back and watching the uh, Mindfulness for Beginners. Uh, there's four videos. There's one of them like an introduction to mindfulness. And um, that might be quite helpful. So today we are going to be talking about mindfulness and joy and laughter. Um, and I did this, uh, I've done this as a workshop actually for the Stuart Lowe Trust a couple of times. Um, and people seem to really enjoy, enjoy it and enjoy the laughter and, and, and kind of sharing those jokes and things. So I'm going to try and do that as a video today. So we've talked about gratitude. Um, in another video and how it links to being mindful because until we n notice things we can't be grateful for them and gratitude can really enhance our well-being and our contentment um, and joy kind of links into that you know joy comes from gratitude and and laughter kind of links into that in a in a way mindfulness is about um, enhancing our sense of openness to what happens to us um, and that sense of curiosity is linked with that sort of childlike joy, um, joy in life, joie de vivre, if you like, if you want to say it in French. Um, and so, so that kind of sense of openness and curiosity is linked with laughter and sharing jokes with people uh, and that kind of sense of connection with others. Um, so children are, are very good at being uh, curio curious. Um, and and they have what in in mindfulness is called beginner's mind, which is something that we kind of lose when we get older. We we can come become because of what happens to us and our reaction to it. We can become quite closed, and not have that kind of sense of curiosity about the world and what happens to us and our reactions to it. Um, and practicing these is, is is kind of a skill really and getting back to that childlike state of wonder and joy in, in everyday things um, and it's it's kind of a it is a sense of openness and a sense of flow um, and it is something that we can get back to um, <clears throat> excuse me so laughter I wanted to talk about laughter as a kind of a, a letting go really um, and it's it's a good antidote to fear and distress and, and, and difficult times. And I found this really for myself, actually, when I've been going through a hard time with my health or whatever it is, um, to kind of find something to laugh about, that kind of gallows humour, if you like, has really helped me to get through some hard times. And it's not always easy to see the funny side of things or to find something to laugh about. Um, when things do seem very serious and very difficult but I think that it can really help us to get through those times and to kind of see begin to see a different perspective because when we are in those hard times um, sometimes the only thing we can see is, is the is that hard hard difficulty um, so kind of opening up and seeing a different perspective can really help us to get back a little bit of balance. Um, and it's it's very difficult to remain stressed and, and tight and um, anxious when you're laughing your socks off. Um, those two are quite different states, so it can really shift um, your feelings and your mood. Um, there's, I think there was a study done on people who um, are uh, phobic about travelling on the tube. Uh, and I work with a lot of people who are phobic about tra travelling on public transport. It's quite a common thing, especially on the tube because it's it's quite closed in. Um, and I think they they did a study where they they put a, um, a group of people who are phobic with uh, a psychotherapist, and they were encouraged to talk about their feelings and 
and all sorts of things like that and they put another group of people with a comedian um, and the people who were with the comedian actually were able to travel further um, because they were laughing and they kind of for forgotten to a certain extent about their phobia and their fear um, so it can be very a very powerful kind of force to help us to get through um, anxiety or anything like that um, <clears throat> I remember actually, and also kind of laughing at yourself in a in a in an affectionate way, not in a not in a horrible way. Um, that's really helped me actually to to learn to do that. Um, I remember when I first started doing um, stress reduction courses. Um, I was very anxious about about doing them, very stressed about doing it, and and that irony I thought was quite funny. And to be able to laugh about that really helped me to let go of that fear and, and that anxiety to, to a certain extent. Um, and I remember another time when I was um, I was kind of under a, a bit of time pressure. I had to prepare for a for a workshop, a mindfulness workshop, and I had the laptop on my lap, and I was taking it very seriously. I've got to do this. It's very important. Blah blah blah. And um, my cat decided that was the time that, that she wanted to sit on my lap and have a cuddle and um, she was very persistent and she I said you know no, no I've got to do this and, and in the end she just kind of clonked herself on the laptop you know half on my lap half on the laptop and um, I just started giggling because it was like she was teaching me to come back to the moment and stop projecting into the future and stressing and being anxious about getting it right which is something that, that um, I do from time to time, I'm a very perfectionist. Um, and I've got to the stage where I can laugh about that now. I can, I can kind of notice it and be curious. Oh, look, there I go again. Um, which it means it doesn't have so much of a hold on me anymore, which is quite liberating. Um, so, yeah, and I, I was thinking about um, how, how that experience, you know, she was really teaching me to come back to the present moment. Um, my cat, um, because animals are very much in the moment um, and quite mindful, really. Um, so I think I'd like to <laughs> to tell you some jokes. I'm not very good at telling jokes, so please forgive me if my delivery is terrible. But I hope at least some of them might uh, make you smile. Okay, so this is one of my they're kind of Zen jokes, really. Um, sort of related to what, what we talk about when we talk about mindfulness. Drink tea and nourish life. With the first sip, joy. With the second, satisfaction. With the third, peace. With the fourth, a biscuit. <laughs> okay, um, seeing his master on the other side of a raging torrent, a student waved his arms and shouted out, Master, Master, how do I get to the, other, to the other side? The master smiled and said, You are on the other side. I think that's funny, but I think it must be really annoying if you're the student on the other side. Um, and this is kind of a classic Zen joke. A Zen master was visiting London. He went up to a hot dog vendor and said, Make me one with everything. The vendor fixed up a hot dog with fried onions, gherkins and mustard and handed it to the Zen master, who paid with a £20 note. The vendor put the note in his register and snapped it shut. Excuse me, but where's my change, said the Zen master. Oh, my brother, said the vendor. Change comes from within. <clears throat> um, I quite like this. I saw this and this kind of made me laugh. This is how it is to be a human being and try and practice mindfulness. Today I will live in the present, unless the present moment is unpleasant, in which case I will eat a cookie. Um, and this isn't really related to, to Zen, but it, it still made me laugh. Last night, as I was lying in bed, looking up at the stars in the sky, I thought to myself, where's my ceiling gone? Um, and this one, just to finish, uh, this is about the kind of non-judgmental side of, of mindfulness and how tricky it is to actually be non-judgmental. 
So many people these days are too judgmental. I can tell just by looking at them. Okay, so we'll do some mindfulness practice now. So I'd like to do something, um, with, we'll focus on our breathing for a short while, and then we'll go into something called choiceless awareness, which is basically just being aware of what comes up in the present moment. And I will guide you through that. Okay, and also I'd like you to bring a sense of curiosity, a sense of playfulness if you can with your meditation, not taking it too seriously, not trying too hard, just being curious to see what comes up and what comes and goes from, the, from moment to moment and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to invite you to close your eyes if that feels comfortable to you. Or if you prefer, you can just lower your gaze to the floor. Getting yourself as comfortable as possible. Becoming aware of the support of the chair or the bed. Whatever you're resting on right now. And allowing your awareness to rest on your breathing. The gentle rise and fall of your stomach and chest. Rising gently as you breathe in. Falling gently as you breathe out. as best you can, just giving your full attention to your breath, to each breath in each moment. Noticing when your mind wanders. Noticing what distracts you from your breath in the present moment. Congratulate yourself for having noticed that your mind wanders. And then let those distractions go. Bringing your awareness gently back to your breathing.
and just extending your awareness as best you can to your whole experience of this present moment. Just noticing what comes and goes. Noticing your thoughts. Thoughts about the past. Thoughts about the future. Judgments about the present moment. Judgments about yourself. Holding them all in awareness. With curiosity gentleness and compassion. And using the breath as an anchor, if that helps you to stay in the present moment. Just observing what comes and goes as best you can. Maybe you notice certain sensations in the body, comfort or discomfort, temperature, again just holding it all in your awareness. Noticing what you notice. Noticing any tendency you have to want to get your meditation right. Any attachment you have to wanting a certain feeling from the meditation. And just holding that in your awareness too. Smiling with whatever comes and goes. Breathing with whatever comes and goes.
and taking a few moments just to focus once more just on your breathing. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes once more. You can have a stretch if you want to. And just sitting quietly for a few minutes or as long as it takes. So I was actually, just to wrap up, I was just thinking about um, comedians and uh, thinking a lot of comedians actually are, are quite mindful because they, especially if they tell a lot of jokes like kind of observational comedy, um, so they will say things like, have you ever noticed? Um, and the joke is in that, yes, you have noticed and you hadn't actually um, consciously put it into words, but it's something that, that, that kind of connects us. Um, and um, yeah, I was just thinking about how you need to be mindful in, in, in terms of noticing those little things um, and how that is kind of linked to humour, it can be. Okay, well thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it and you got something from it. And um, please don't forget to, to check out the Stuart Low Trust website, slt.org.uk for all the latest happenings. Um, please stay safe and well. Um, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Leave me a comment or suggestion or a joke if you want to. Um, and um, yeah, thank you. See you soon.